All right, here we go. Salute to Knicks Nation. CP from Knicks Fan TV here. Another episode of the Post Up. I'm at my guy Chris Shamus' house. 34 years season ticket holder. You guys got to see this fan cave. Trust me, it's unbelievable. Let's take a look. Good, man. Welcome to the Nook. Welcome to the Nook's Nook. The cave. Here it is. So we'll start, uh, start in the hallway here. Um, got my collection of Sports Illustrated, signed by each, going back to the 70s. Uh, you got your, your Bradleys. The Busher. The Busher, the nice. Human Eraser, for God's sakes. Marvin Webster, <laughs> Clyde, Jerry West. Jerry West. It's May 7th, Keeps going. 73. Right the Starks one is dope, right? Starks is great, one of my favorites. Autographed. We got the Bomb Squad. Um, all represented here and the interesting fact about that is they were known for the three-point shot and if you remember they I think they had like 100 118 20 something like that uh, threes that year yeah I mean the Warriors do that in what a, a week <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah so. the bomb squad was ahead of its time man yeah. Rick Bettino yeah Johnny Newman yeah. St yeah. Uh, Mark Jackson yeah Trent Tucker you had a uh, young Rod Strickland yeah you know young Rod I mean? Strickland and then you had Patrick Ewing man. Yeah. Patrick Ewing could have played in today's NBA and the versatility that he had, even in those days, offensively, I mean, the bomb squad was incredible. Incredible. All right, so let's take a look at some of the jerseys, man. So obviously, you know, we're starting off with uh, with, with the big fella. Captain. Pat, 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 got to start with Patrick. Patrick. Only right. So we got there, but you know, while that's not game worn, I got, we'll start with the jerseys. Start with the jerseys. So this is just like, I mean, I've collected so many jerseys over the years, I don't even know what to do with them. So I just pulled out a couple of ones I thought would be a little bit more special. Yeah. Um, you got your John Starks uh, All Star. This is, one of my favorites, man. This is the one I think you promoted once upon a time. Definitely. Um, man. Not a game worn, but this was done by uh, back in the day. I was telling you about Jerry Cosby. Uh, Jerry Cosby was the store that used to be under the Garden, mm. and they used to actually do the jerseys for the Knicks uh, before all these other companies came along. So this was one I remember right after the All Star game. They were numbering these things up, and I just grabbed one because I was a big Starks guy. So nice. so that's that one. Later got it signed. Uh, what else we got? We got Oakley. This is game worn. Oak. Um, I don't remember these, when, but the this. The whites is so crispy, man, and always harder to get. I mean, you got to bring the guy back into the garden. Oak has got to come <laughs> back home, man. But yeah, so that's uh, got Oak Tree. Nice. We still love you. We still love you. <laughs> you got uh, you got LJ. Game worn. Yeah, these fiftieth anniversary. This is the fiftieth anniversary. Nice, man. They're nice. These, these gotta bring them nice. back. These are gotta bring them back. In. There you go. You got the LJ. Autographed by LJ. LJ, 50th anniversary year. Now this is my guy. I like this because he's one of the guys I know. This Rory Sparrow. This is Rory one Sparrow. of your guys, man. One of my guys. He's the guy feeding Bernard. Number two. So and this is got, a Cosby. Yeah, there's a Cosby. This is a Jerry Cosby yep. original. Got Rory to sign no it for me. No longer in business. Rare, rare jersey. <laughs> rare jersey. Autograph by number now, two. Now Cosby's Rory's still around. Running. You just have to leave the garden, and I think it's on 32nd. So maybe? they still make jerseys. Oh yeah. It's oh, not. not for the Knicks, okay. but, they, but they're in a jersey right, maker. Right. They're a jersey maker. Okay, okay. Um, what else you got, we got here? You got your game worn Patrick. Now these, Not the signed. fan base is still waiting for the <laughs> Knicks to release these jerseys. The 9-7 jerseys. I loved it with the black down the yep. stripe. Uh, I don't know if they're going to bring them back out, man. Maybe, maybe one day. Heat, maybe this one day. Heat, yeah. And then you got your Mella. This I think yeah, we I got from the one. team. This being a season ticket holder, I think they gave these to us. I liked how they put the uh, this Knicks logo at the top. Yeah, like that. that's uh, nice. I did like that's that nice. One. Yeah, man. But I got a million other jerseys, and I can bore you to death with them. But um, but yeah, so those are some of the better ones. Nice. Moving over here, what can we say about the dunk? I think it speaks for itself. Classic, and this is autographed by John. Autographed Sons. by John. Uh, late Anthony Mason. Rest in peace to Mace, man. What, what was your impressions of Mace? Uh, quick story on Mason, uh, another Nick event that I went to. Uh, fantastic guy. Um, I remember, what I remember most about him is I was with my late grandfather who I was really close with and my family, and they had all the Knicks stationed at all the different tables. And it was like an autograph sign. Was, I said it earlier on the interview where you, know, you brought the ball around kind of thing. So after their, I don't know if they have an hour obligation, mm -hmm. so you get on the different lines, so there'd be a table with like Hubert and Mason and Ewing and whoever and Oakley and whatever. So I remember going around the whole room and the time was up and everybody kind of left the room. There's like a lot of people there. Mason was the only guy who stayed and signed every single thing nice. for everybody. And I remember my grandfather getting online and I was like, I was like, why are you, you know, you know he goes, I want to be last. And when he got to the end of the, when he finally got up to Mason, he shook his hand, he said, I just wanted to thank you for 
do what you did. So nice. You really, really well, special guy. New York. Special I mean, guy. We, we definitely miss him. Um, 94 finals. Took this from the team store back in the 94 finals. As close as I might get to a championship. That's it. But, but hey, the, 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 it's better than not having it. The, the paper mache <laughs> copy is better That's than it. nothing. That's man. it. So yeah, so we got, uh, got a... Some Nick history here. My little library, my Nick library, we'll call it. The Nick's library. The Nick's library. Okay. Most of the books, I would say 95% of them are signed by whomever. A couple I'll point out. A okay. couple I'll point out. Um, we'll start with uh, Holtzman. So, the legendary, the legendary Red Holtzman, Holtzman uh, who's from Long Island. Right, so, he was kind enough to sign this for me um, to Chris, a true Knicks fan, Red Holtzman. There you so go. You got man. that. You got That's that. Legendary. And, then, and then you get the polar opposite book. Then you gotta go, then you move over to Barkley. Now he's not a Nick, but I am in the sports and entertainment industry and one of my coworkers at the time did an event with him. Mm -hmm. um, and at the time he had this book out and he had a, kind of a gag gift for me. Um, he had Barclays. Typical Charles. Had, had, had Charles sign his name. We know he likes to bash the Knicks yeah, a little bit, right? Oh, he loves it. He stop he it, Charles. If you listen, Nick, stop it. He, he lives for All it. All right, man. so anyway, so Charles to Chris, what about the Knicks? They suck. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you, Charles. I already know. <laughs> you can't forget that one, man. So then you got Charles your other ones. You got, crazy, yeah. Man. So um, what else we got? Um, we got my son's first game and my daughter's first game. Ticket stub sign. So both by Fraser. This is legacy right here. Legacy. Man. We'll it, pass. This starts their caves. So that this starts their caves. This is where you nice. start. So her first game, his first game. I got to get a frame. Gotta yeah. Get a, um, what else we got? We got a piece of the floor, Bernard. This was. Uh, 60 Piece, point game. 60 First point game. That's Christmas Day, 1984. Bernard King. There so this go. is from Madison, the, the yes, court. Yes, this is the championship court. This is the court he played on when and had him sign that. Nice. So that was kind of cool. Even though they lost, it was still Christmas, right? Yeah, you have the Starberry. Got the Starberry. Um, Come on. Yeah, $15. 15 bucks, man. With the autograph, it's, uh, yeah, you know, man. what does that bring the value up to? Would you play basketball with these right <laughs> Probably now? Probably not. Break your Probably not. Probably not. Immediately. Probably not. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, but shout out to Steph for having that, uh, you know. Yeah, so we got that. The community. Well, what do we got going on here, let's man? Move, let's move. <laughs> let's move on. Let's move, move on. on. Move on. Let's move on. <laughs> um, Okay, so we got pieces of the floor. Willis Reed, where he limped out. So this is this is a piece of the floor. That's a piece of the floor. Yes. Uh, you got Dave DeBush. I don't know if you know, but he used to play baseball. Yes, um, Dave DeBush was a good baseball so player. So got a little well, baseball man. sign. Uh, let's let's talk about this. Well, thing. <laughs> well this is uh, this is your choking. You know, if you're choking, you need to have some sort of. Uh, you know, I think every place you could potentially eat should have one of these. You were at this game. I was at this game. I was at this game. And I remember, what I remember most about it is there was, this was the game where he hit the, what was it? So that's seven points in yeah. nine seconds or yeah. something. Um, and yeah, so I remember putting on, it, I thought it was out of hand. You know, we were all putting our jackets, it was game one, putting our jackets on, talking about game two. Half the building is already leaving. And then it happened. Oof. And I just like the and, air, the, and air he, the building. And he fouled. Uh, I think he was Greg <laughs> Anthony, man. He, <sighs> he fouled him. And it's, then he looks over at Spike. And, oh, that, that was just it's painful. Tough. Life. It was tough. Painful Reggie, life. Reggie was. Um, uh, he was tough. Re Reggie was one of those guys who really. You know what? I could probably attribute some of him to me being the fan that I am today too. Hey, you got. Reggie, you have to have your enemies. You have got, to have your enemies. Yeah, the enemies. You got your Jordans. Much, you got your Tim yeah, Hardaways. Yeah. You got your those guys. I mean. Yeah, they probably yeah. helped fuel who I am today. I, I agree, man. Yeah. I think it definitely contributed to the emotions. What's Batman the without story? the Joker? That's it. What's Batman That's without it. the Joker? The storylines of the game. The That's it. certainly contributed to That's it. it. So you got some of your signs here, uh, a lot of the giveaways that they used to do, the headshots. This, this is my favorite one. Right Reggie here. Chokes, yeah, that's special. Yeah, that's special. special. Um, yeah, you got your, uh, your Game 7s here. We'll just open this up real quick. We'll give you a, it's a lot of mess here, but we got, we got, we got your jerseys, your mellow uh, when it first came. Your 94. Oh, man, this is beautiful, man. Pull that one out. I had a couple patches added to the Mitchell and Ness, the finals patch. Nice. And the, I think that was for who did 99. Somebody was that whole, I don't remember. Somebody passed and they added that. We'll throw that one out there for now. Um, got more Ewing. You got your Frazier. King. King. Old school King. Old King, yep. Got more Mason. Hey, we got a poor We'll skip yeah, through that. Skip that. It's probably a good place to start. It, it goes on and on. We can go here all day, but you got your penance. That one came back for me from Houston. Okay. Um, and then, then then you got you got the chairs. Yeah, the so tell us about these chairs. So this I got from a collector. I think it was, uh, I think they were called, Gotta Have It. They're, it's in New York. They, they're really big on a lot of, um, you know, really like crazy vintage, vintage stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, you could see 
This goes back to like 1925. So this is from the original, original garden. garden. 1925. 1925. So you got the Rangers Stanley Cup wow. in 1940. Well, it actually goes back to 27. Uh, the Knicks debuted against the Chicago Stags wow. in 46. Joe Lewis fight against Rocky Marciano. And it goes on, but uh, yeah, so these are, these are pretty vintage. Nice. Yeah, good piece. Got your coffee table book. What's what's a coffee George table? George Kalinsky, the famed photographer for Fame. the New York Knicks. So he signed it along with Red Holtzman, Old Monroe, Bill Bradley, Dean Meminger, the late Dean Meminger. Clyde. DeBusher, Clyde, Reed. Nice. And then we display it on our, Steiner had this piece uh, put out. This is a piece of the floor before the renovation. So Not the championship it. floor. Okay. But this is when they renovated. So this is pre the most recent renovation yes. championship. Yes. Uh, Next far floor. from championship far floor. From championship. Far from Let's be clear, it's far, far from, from championship floor. Turmoil, drama, <laughs> Drama floor. Yeah. Drama happens okay. on this table. Okay. Uh, you got your hat collection here. Got my hat collection here, and I have one for you. Um, I know you give all these hats away. Nice. You got a new hat that we can... Uh, I gotta pass something along so you can I, give it away. Listen, man, I kind of want to keep this one, man, but we're gonna give this away to the fans, so stay tuned for the giveaway, because this is hard. Little this piece of the Knicks nook that I can leave you with. Let's see, moving along the big memories here, right? Yeah, so this looks like we got like a wall of, of game memories, man. Take us through some of these. So obviously the Houston shot uh, from 99 that started the miracle run. Um, I wasn't at the game, but I got this little clapper here. I had a friend Free who was a Heat fan. He was happy to give this up. Um, so anyway, maybe one day I'll get Alan. Alan, if you're watching, maybe you'll sign this for me one day. <laughs> get you in here. Um, got your game seven. I took this. Now, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but uh, I actually got the opportunity. Here you go. That was the jump ball from uh, from game seven that so I took. This is game seven in Houston. In Houston. After all the marbles. All the marbles. Everything on the line. So when... when um, Game six, when Stark went crazy mm -hmm. and almost won it until Elijah blocked it, sitting with my family, we looked at each other and we said, we're going. Like, we were so emotional, so emotionally invested, mm -hmm. we're going. So we got tickets, bought a flight, flew down. I got upper levels, of expensive tickets still back then. Um, and who am I sitting with? When I, when I get to my seat, I had Tony Starks, his brother. John Starks' John Starks' brother. brother during the... the the, Incredible. The two for 18. Then you had his, I took this picture with his um, mom and, I think late mom and grandma. His mom and his grandma, wow. Right there. Um, so I was sitting with them, and I remember you said you have this, this yeah, sign. I'm gonna need one of those. Yeah, I do have that about so That's mine, that's mine. I, I don't think it made it so back. So this is Chris that's sitting me. here in with day. John Starks' his family as he's building a brick house. Yes. To lose that's the fight. The brick man. house. <laughs> oh man. They look happy there. I don't know if they were that happy, but I know I, re I do remember them. They were very supportive, standing, cheering. They were saying, "We love you, JT." I mean, that must be his nickname put to them. I, I mean, how did you feel sitting there, man? You know, Tony Starks. Starks I remember down, his man. brother was very focused. He didn't talk much. He was just like about the game. They were very cheerful. I was, I was struggling with it. Um, yeah. I mean, it was tough, you know, because I'm a John Starks guy. So, you know, it brings up a great question that everybody talks about is. You know, do you, do you pull him or do you do right. you play? A lot of people wanted Rolando Blackman. Uh, yeah, yeah, and you, you know, it, it's funny. Um, I'm one of the few that actually believe that you, you roll with Starks. I mean, that, yeah. As bad as he was, he's the kind of guy who can go two for 18, but hit that that last shot. But yeah, Starks it was hard. He was a streaky player. He was man. a streaky it, it player, and you've seen yeah. it before. Right, he would come right. through. You know, hindsight's 2020. Who knows? So I met Harper and I met Rolando, and Rolando, they were the nicest people, and we started talking about it, and Rolando actually turned to me and he said, he told me a funny story. He said, you know, I was ready. We talked about that moment. And he said, I was ready to play. I'm a veteran. I, I had the best history against this team. It was frustrating that I couldn't get in. Starks needed a break. He wanted to give him that break. And I remember he said, after the game, Riley apologized to him. Wow. That's what he told me. So I don't know. Take it for what it's worth. Yeah. That's what he told me. Um, but yeah, so it's that was tough. kind of a tough, 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 tough game. Man. Tough game. There's no way around it. Um, and you got your uh, your championships here. Oh, glory, man! Hello, another Klinsky. Absolutely, Klinsky. I mean, I mean this, this oh, is the what towels. I remember oh, okay. as a kid, man. When you just you used to have these things waving around. Nobody beats the Wiz. Yeah, come yeah, on, man. Yeah. These, so we, these are classic so things, man. Those are some of my favorite towels from the other. I used to give them every game, like they give you one. So I used to. Yeah. I tried to make it. These are my personal banners, right? These are my little. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's all it. I got right small now. Small victories. We'll that's take the we're about small, small victories. victories. Small victories. Uh, we got to got uh, Mello. No, no, this was his first game. You were, you um, were at this game? I was at this game. Wow. Um, and that's a piece of the net. This was a Steiner piece. Nice. Um, but yeah, so I got a little little memory from that. That was my ticket stub. 
Tony Douglas. I was so I was so hyped for this, man. You sent me the 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 preview, the MSG yes, preview video. Yes. It hyped you up. I right? still remember like it was remember, yesterday. Yeah. I, I was so hyped for this moment. So so you great. Know, unfortunately, it didn't didn't lead to much. But no. uh, as a mellow guy, I was happy he came home. But we had that moment. We had <laughs> we, we had that moment. These were from the Pacers series. They're, one of them was crumbling apart, but and you can't read it anymore. It's faded over the years. But it used to say dog pound. This yeah. was the pair he wore in the Pacers this series. Is who? Oakley. Charles Oakley. Charles Oakley. Charles Oakley. Charles Oakley. Wore yep. these in the Pacers Eastern Conference Finals in 94. I and, and, and the dog pound, it was Oakley, it was Mason, Mason everybody all those went, guys. Went, went with the baldies. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Those were the days. So those were the days. You, like came. you came in black sneakers, yeah. the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, that was the it, whole man. Thing. It, was, it was an attitude, it was a feeling. That was yeah. what the dog pound was all about. And that's, about. that's the curse that we have. Those people yeah. who went through those 90s teams, that's what we're stuck with. That's why we so can't hard leave. hard to get it back. And this is probably my favorite Nick moment in all of Knicks is when he stood on the press table. The iconic. Like finally, clinching. finally. Eastern Conference Finals, man. Yeah, this this was it, man. So that was that was pretty special. Um, the captain embracing the, the faithful. Yeah, so that was like kind of a, that was, that was where I was at. That was, that was that was as close to a championship, I guess, as I'll ever feel. Um, yeah. At least what the guard would be like. Um, and then and then you got this. This is probably, of, of all the things um, in my room, I would say the chairs. Section 62. So Section this is 62. The original. These are not just the chair. So th the story is this: is I wanted my chairs when they were get, they were renovating, mm -hmm. much like uh, Steiner was they giving away the Yankee uh, the Yankee chairs. Yeah. They had the rights to do the garden chairs. Right. So I called. So so they took the chairs out and gave Steiner Sports. Yes. Got Steiner all the had the rights to sell the rights all their over. chairs. Okay. Okay. So I called Steiner. I'm like, oh, you know, I want a pair. They were like eight hundred dollars or some crazy thing like that. But I said I want my chairs. I just assumed I can get my chairs. So he, they were like, no, no. But we could put a, you know, we could put a little plate on it. We'll mm -hmm. say. I was like, no, no. I want my chairs. I mean, it's 25 years. Yeah. My late grandfather, my grandmother, my kid. You know, just everybody has sat in these chairs. My mm -hmm. friends. I said I wanted. I, I'm not going to settle for an imposter chair. I wanted my chairs. So long story short is, um, they they couldn't do it. So I, I was, I'm pretty resourceful, as you can see. Um, I called the garden. I got all the way up to like. I'm not gonna say his name, but let's just say he was president level yeah. of the garden. Big wig. Big wig at the mm -hmm. garden. Mm -hmm. Who was kind enough to, to call me back and he he too shared the same sentiment. He goes, I was gonna try to get chairs, really nice about it. He goes, We just there's just no way to manage that. So I was like, I was so frustrated, I gave up. I was like, you know what? I don't want it. and for me to give him up, it was really tough. I was just yeah. like, you know, when you see this room and like this was like a centerpiece yeah. for me. Yeah. So I was like, I finally decided, you know what, I'm just gonna walk away. I, two weeks later I get a call from the president, mm -hmm. um, and and he goes, we did it, we got your chairs, and I was just like, nice. floored. I was floored. Nice. Uh, nice. And not only that, but I bought him directly from the garden, and did save myself the markup yeah. <laughs> of a star yeah. sports. And these were classic seats, man. Yeah. I remember coming to these Nick games, Ranger games, the circus, yep. you know, Ringling yep. Brothers, wrestling, you know, all of that, man. Yep. These, this was classic MSG when you walked out, you know, into the arena. Yeah. And, and, and we had the aisle seat. seats too. Like this would this would be my mom's chair. Yeah. This would be my chair. This was on the aisle. And then there was a bar right here, so it was really nice because not only did we have the aisle, but people couldn't walk through, yeah, it which is really nice. It, it was, was like nice. a little, it was like yeah. a little, uh, like a little cut. personal personal seat. Nice, man. Uh, so moving on, um, you know, you got the four-point play. And whenever I'm feeling down and out, and it's tough, you just go like this. <laughs> so when you're feeling down, it's my little pick-me-up. Go to it, little, man. And you got Marv, Perfect. and you got Marv Perfect. Albert doing it. Classic Marv. Classic moment, four point throw play. Throw up the big L. Throw up the big L. Yeah, I mean, you just know where you were at this moment, and um, th this was this was just electric, man. So down here, um, we got the the '94 team signed by the whole team. Nice. We got the '99 team. You got to have those. That's just, like I said, it's as close as we got. So those were kind of special. Moving on here, um, when he wasn't wearing ice packs, he got Ewan's knee pads. <laughs> these, these are the classics, man. I had the ice, but it melted, the, so yeah, no, yeah. At least got... you know these, these have gone through hell and back. That's it. That's it. Or at least one of them. So yeah, yeah so that, that was a pretty cool piece. Um, you got Starks' sneakers. Um, I think that was '96. I want to okay. say I can't remember. Autograph. Uh, autograph. The now defunct, this is kind of cool, this is a hat from, I don't know if you know, he had a wireless company. Alan Houston and John Starks Wireless, three-point wireless. I had no idea, yeah. three-point wireless. Three-point wireless. <laughs> Still have the hat, I don't know why, but classic. a little classic piece there. Yeah, really. And then you got, you know, there's former, you know, this Nick room didn't happen overnight. So this is a, uh, 
This is actually a smaller piece of what my room used to look wow, like. It's the original. That's another one. Original yeah. thing. Another, yeah, so this actually won a contest and I won some like gift card at the Okay. So they had this on the screen at the garden when I won. Nice. Um, so this is a different version of it. Uh, another piece. Okay. Another giveaway. Um, it's a little John Starks autograph. Wow. So you can, uh, I, again, I, I gotta leave something behind. John Starks. Another one of my guys. Another one of my guys. For the nation. Nice, man. Appreciate it, man. No problem. Right, thanks no, a lot, Mixed man. Nation. Gotta, gotta pass some of this along. Nice. So now that we took the tour, let's have a little talk, man. Let's talk Absolutely. about the current Absolutely. state of the Knicks. Let's do it. Let's do it. Welcome to the cave. Yeah, no doubt, man. So, 34 years season ticket holder. What's the history behind the, those season tickets? Well, you know, we've had season tickets since 86, 87. Um, we've always had two, back to the old garden. Um, and yeah, you know, I would go with my mom and my my father. Um, they've since divorced, but we used to, back in the day, we used to rotate the tickets, much like the movie Fever Pitch. I don't know if you remember the yeah, movie yeah. It used to be kind of a draft, and we'd look at the schedule, and we'd figure out who we're gonna, you know, who we're gonna play, and mix up the games. But yeah, for the most part, we'd uh, we'd kind of rotate games, and and been going since God, as long as I know, 86, 86, 87. 86, 87. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was still in diapers uh, <laughs> wet, in the, wet in the bed, man. Well, what were some of your earliest memories at uh, the garden in those days? You know, well, my earliest memories were probably before I had season tickets. I think I started being a fan. I, I want to say the first star we had that I remember was Michael Ray Richardson, Sugar. Um, yeah. Wonder where he got that nickname. Right. Um, but yeah, no, he was he was the first guy, and ultimately he was traded um, to who became Bernard King. Um, and that's where it all started for me. I mean, growing up watching Bernard King was like my idol. And, um, you know, we were lucky enough to get um, tickets in the 86, 87 year. Um, I was there. One of the best memories I can remember being at the Garden was when Bernard came back from his injury and he had this st crazy standing ovation, which, I, which was so impressionable. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, if only we had been able to keep him, um, you know, through the Ewing years and he had that second, if, if King had had the, the second star, that being With Ewing. Ewing. Would have been, uh, uh, would have been, would have missed, been unbelievable. Uh, would have been unbelievable. And then they well, traded, but then they traded him, right? Yeah. And then he came back with the, you know, he had the injury. They traded him, and turned out he went to become an all star and or, dropped forty nine on us, if I remember correctly. What could have been, man. Yeah. Do you remember any of the sixty point games? Uh, the that was the, uh, Christmas. The, the, that was the Christmas game. Yeah, I mean, I used to. I mean, back then, you know, I used to watch as many games as I could. But when I couldn't see it, I my late grandmother, you know, she used to tell me what Bernard scored. Um, you know, because sometimes it was past my bedtime back yeah. in the day. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, Bernard was just that guy who uh, I was lucky enough to work with later, um, you know, being in the sports and entertainment industry. But, you know, watching him play, he was just, I mean, a, just a scoring machine. Just, you know, kind of like, you know, Carmelo Anthony was later. Uh, he's one of the best scorers I think I've ever seen play the game. Shifting gears to the 90s, what was MSG like? during that Ewing era in the early 90s? Um, you know, I think we were still, you know, as, as good as we were, we were still angry with them, you know? <laughs> as, good, as good as we were, hey, you know? We have high expectations, Yeah, we have high expectations. Man, we want to win constantly. You know, yeah. I remember, like, you know, God, you know, we used to kill Ewing. Oh, and, yeah. you know, it's funny, like, uh, you know, when I think about my favorite players, I, I think about Ewing, and, you know, he was never, like, I loved Ewing, don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but, you know, he was, he, he I, I think I really appreciated him most after he left. We did. We did. I remember even as a kid, those early days, you used to see the back pages. The papers used to kill, kill you. Kill them. They kill. threw the poster back on yeah. poster night. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, he had it, you know, and he was he was not very engaging with the fans. He had a tough relationship with the fans. He had a tough relationship with the fans. Yeah. I mean, I remember that firsthand. I might have stories when I used to go to events and um, I'll tell one quick story. I, we were at a Nick event. It was like 94. I had one of my team balls, I don't know, it's here somewhere, um, where we were trying to get the whole team sign to sign this ball. Um, it was a regular basketball, and I remember going around the room, I had the whole team signed, and I went to go sign it with, with Ewing, and he said, I can't sign a Spalding ball. So I had the whole team, wow. he wouldn't sign a Spalding ball, so I'm like, oh man, I can't believe this. So I, I left. Next year, I'm like, I come back, he needed to sign a Voight ball at the time. Mm. So I came, came back with a Voight ball the next year, because you know, it was these team events. He signed it, and then I went over to, you know, you go around the room, you get all the different players, yeah. and then they had Oakley there. And Oakley said, oh, I can't sign a Voight ball. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> and, then, and then he looks he at me. He looks at me. Business, Oakley looks at me holding the ball, and he goes, ah, fuck. 
<laughs> it's yeah. oak. Come on, oak. And oak, and oak signed yeah. it. So it was kind, nice. of, kind of a funny story. Nice, kind nice. Of a funny story. That, that, that's but so that was his relationship yeah. with the, yeah. the fans. It was, it was kind of a weird one. I think that he, he, he was a polarizing figure. But you're right. I think, I think the love is back now. You Big know, time. Now, now that he's not there. Because there's no people. centers like him anymore. Yeah. It's they, just a different game. They don't game. make him like him, man. I, I think my earliest recollection of that was because he was Jamaican. Right. And growing up, my family's from Jamaica, so growing up on the Jamaican household, yeah. you know, any type of athletics, any type of uh, uh, endeavors that Jamaica's in, whether it's education, business, athletics, you always support them with 100%. Yep. So with yep. Ewing now, that was my earliest recollection of basketball was just, you know, Channel 4, NBA on NBC, yep. the Sunday yep. matinee, yep. the triple header, yep. Knicks would be first. Yep. You know, it'd be Knicks Bulls, Knicks Celtics, Knicks Pistons, and and just the, the emotions Yep. that were invoked from those games yep. it just made me fall in love with the I mean Knicks, I look man. back at him the ice on the knees yeah. and the towel and the just the you know just he carry himself up the court yeah. I mean he was just a true warrior, a true warrior. He, he put true it all warrior. on the line for us man and unfortunately it's we're in 2020 now yeah. and it seems like since we traded the captain in 2000 we've just never been able never been to recover same. how do you as a season ticket holder through that era you know you went through the, the Marbury section well first <laughs> the, the end of Houston Sprewell Houston got the yeah. 100 million dollar contract couldn't move Faster than the snail. No. Yeah, the Marbury era, yeah. rife with yeah. turmoil with Isaiah, Nuka Brown Sanders, and Tamello, and so on. How did you, as a season ticket holder, twenty? How did you j continue to go? Uh, you know, for me, it was an outlet. I mean, I think you know, it's just kind of in your blood a little bit. Um, I think if you, you know, I, I think any Nick fan who's gone through the '90s teams, yeah. I think we're cursed. I just think that it's in our blood. The we're not going Ewing, anywhere. Man. We're not going anywhere. The curse if you Ewing. went through like some of these things, I don't know if you can see them in the shot, but if if you go through those those the Pacers, the Heat, the Bulls, that energy that they had, the, the, it's just it's just in your blood. And I just think that you know you kept believing and believing and believing to a fault. Like, that's where we get the delusional term from. Yeah. Um, I just think Nick fans were just, were so, like, we're the best fan base in the world. It's true, man. It's in the true. world. In the world. And, you know, we're very passionate and maybe to a fault, you know, like, yeah. people are scared to play here, I think. Um, it takes a special person. I mean, that's why, you know, I know people give Melo a lot of, you know, there's, there's, there's depending on what side you're on, um, you know, he wasn't the perfect player for us, but. He was such a, you know, he, he embraced it, yeah. and I think that's why he'll he'll get some love. That was a tough, tough era. I mean, as yeah. we close out yeah. the decade, that decade was characterized almost by Melo for yeah. the most part. I mean, 100%. he spent quite some time with the Knicks. Obviously, the, you know, there was a whole summer of LeBron and chasing that, and after we flopped there, then you bring in Amari. What was it like at the Garden? You know, Amari had a hot streak before well, Amari Melo came, came in, in man. MVP -like. they, they ran him to the ground, but Amari, what was that like? In, Amari in came in MVP-like. Yeah. Um, he played great. Um, I remember when we got him. I mean, he was obviously the Knicks. I feel like when they struck out on LeBron, they had a. Uh, they probably felt such they pressure. Felt yeah, they felt the pressure yeah. to do something, and I think Amari kind of, you know, fit that bill. Um, from what I understand, you know, I think th there was an insurance policy on Amari. Amari they, if I remember correctly, they didn't get the insurance. They policy didn't get it these. because they knew. I'm not going to mention names, but I know somebody in the. An NBA source, if you want to call it, mm. um, who used to tell me little things, and I, and I, my understanding was Phoenix knew his knee was not going to hold yeah, up. His over days a couple were years. numbered. No his days were numbered. It. His days were definitely um, And numbered. it started with the Knicks, so he was probably happy to take that money. Um, I was kind of happy to have him at the same time because he he re-energized the fan base. He did. Um, so I thought he played great, but like it just it wore on him over the years, so it never. That really worked out. Melo just returned to the Garden as a member of the Blazers. He could, they could keep asking him about the Raptors question uh, about Jersey retirement. <laughs> Give me your takes on this, nah, man. Should you number know, seven go up in the, in I, the Raptors? I, you know, but just because I, I liked Melo. Um, I, I do see the faults he had. The things I loved about him is I, I was fortunate enough to meet him once or twice. He was great to my kid. Um, I remember trying to get something signed for We had, you know, the security guards standing there, one per person, whatever. My son had two things, and he was like, no, no, you give it to me. And you know, he was just the kind of guy, and I've heard other stories about him, yeah. where he's a really good person. Um, it just, you know, yeah, the ISO ball, some of that stuff was, yeah, but he shouldered it, and I, that's, but 
The rafter's a different thing. I mean, where, where's the bar it's, on the rafter? It's rafters? a different thing, man. It's, it, it's, it's for excellence. It's for it's excellence. For excellence. And, and it's Melo was my favorite player to now, to this day. Right. You know, Melo, Melo's my guy uh, on and off the court. Like you said, yeah. I've heard many stories yeah. about him just from a personal standpoint, how he gave back to the fans, and, and it really um, goes unnoticed sometimes. Yeah. You can't but just I, give that away. You, you, can't, can't, just you can't just give it away, right. man. There's there, not it enough. just wasn't enough wins. That's exactly what it is. It's yeah. just sadly there was just not enough wins to 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 warrant yeah. putting your, your number up there. If he gets us to the Eastern Conference Finals with Nick's team. Maybe. Listen, if, if he's going to go up there, you got to put King up there first. You got to put right? Bernard up there first. I mean, if, if yeah. we're doing that. Yeah. I'm yeah. not even sure. And I love King. Like, you know, so he's since become a whole. I was on the fence too about yeah. King. Because he had two a, years. It's two not a lot of time. Years. It's not a lot of time. time. Now, he yeah. felt like longer because yeah. he was hurt. And back then, the injuries, you, you know, took two and a half years for him to come back. It was a big deal that now they just kind of, I don't know. Use yeah. a little machine and they're back. That's it. You're but um, right back then, in. it was a big deal when he came back. And, and you know, I just think, like, if if he had had a longer career, mm-hmm. I mean, I would consider King now. And I lo- believe me, he's my number one. I yeah. think he's probably... You think we should maybe lower the standards a little bit? and Because uh, some teams one. do it, man. I you know, know some but I don't know. Have kind I don't know. You're, you're, that's, saying, you're saying, that's saying nobody could ever wear that yeah. number again. Yeah. I don't think we should do it. I think we should keep keep it as is. You've heard Starks. You've heard Oakley. Yeah. I, I, as much as I love them, I don't think they're deserving of it either. I think it has to be for excellence. But then you see a point guard like Frank Frank Williams, was it? Who wore 30? Who oh, wore Frank, Frank Williams. Williams. <laughs> and I see that, and I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. You got Randall wearing you got 30 Randall now. Wearing 30. So, so let's talk about the present day. Uh, and and after you know 20 years of, of futile management, it seems like they're trying to build something here. Uh, give me your thoughts on on this current state of the Knicks, right? You know, the Knicks, don't, we, we don't know how to be patient, I think, is the, the big problem. Um, because we had so many setbacks, so many things done wrong, so many things that, that set that timetable back so far. Um, that we're, 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 we're just a hungry, hungry, like, we're already giving up on the plan. Like, we like when this team did the plan B, I will call it, mm-hmm. when they got Randall and mm-hmm. all those veterans, um, you forget. They, it was designed to, like, have that flexibility in a year and then build pieces and... and so I, I kind of expected that our fan base just gets mad. Yeah. Like they just want to blow up. Patient bunch. Hey, we got to be patient. For two you got to be patient. You got to. You got. Yeah. We, we know band aids don't work. I mean, how many more years you want to go? Yeah. You, know, you hear like you know the, the Morris discussion. Like you know, do you trade him? Keep uh, the I, trade. I, I love Morris. I, I you know another guy who I think brings the culture, brings all these things. I'm not. Get, I'm not going to give him away, but I would try to move him. Same here. I would Same try here. to move him. Yeah. Um, not because I don't love him. But I'm not, I won't give him away just because I think he brings so much to the culture. Mm-hmm. But to make your team better and take that next step, it's, it's, he doesn't fit the timeline. Agree with you 100%. There's no doubt his impact on the youngsters, right? Even Mitch, right. Frank, RJ, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a leader on this team. And, and I think he brings that toughness, that energy that we've sorely missed. And like you, I wouldn't give him away, but you have to... Do what's best for the Certainly future. don't let him walk away. No. And that's Because he you, did you, everything you, we you, wanted. Exactly. Right? He, he, he came here. He's putting up. I mean, I didn't. I had no idea he was this good. I mean, I yeah. think he's really good. Um, but, you know, we got him with the, with the, I mean, he probably knew it too, right? Although he says he wants to stay. But come here for a year. Showcase yourself in Europe. Mm-hmm. What better stage? And then go on to like, a, he, he deserves to be on a contender. I, 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 I think so. And, and if we can get him to a contender and then bring him back. Well, you know, we can, we, we can sign him to a larger deal yeah. and, on one year, maybe not a multi-year deal, right. but we can pay him a lot of money if he wants to go somewhere, play for something real, and come back. So I think it's something that and they we'll need to And we'll see if he's real, then. We'll see how we'll see <laughs> if he Do you want to come back? Because right? we can do it that way. We'll see if he backs it up, man. I just think, you know, going forward, the, the focus still has to be on, on the youngsters, right? It has to be yeah. on RJ. It has to be... Frank has two more years of, of development here. What's, what's going to happen after that? Kevin Knox. Uh, uh, you know, Mitchell Robinson, mm-hmm. obviously. So we, we have to continue to see uh, the growth and development of this team. What do you think about Mike Miller? Uh, you know what? I like Mike Miller so far. Um, I mean, God, he's sadly, he's, I mean, I think Fizdell's a great guy. I got to meet him once before. Um, but he's, make, he's making, it looks clear, right? I mean, the team's competitive. It, probably every game, a lot of a, every game except yeah, one, he makes adjustments. A lot of improvements. Yeah, he makes adjustments. He, you know, he seems to call people accountable. Um, I think it's you know I'm not going to throw him the everything just yet, but I think I think he he should be considered for. I I think you know you, and you know me I've always yeah. told you Van Gundy and all that that's more for sentimental reasons mm-hmm. and as much as I respect Jeff as a right. coach, but I still think 
you have to consider a coach who is going to have patience sure. with these kids to build them up and is in it for the long haul. Right. I'm not sure if a Van Gundy can do it. For you know, you you, you I, I think we need to keep he's that. T- he's got a TV gig. I mean, I, I I you know sometimes I find myself saying Van Gundy would be perfect. Because yeah. I grew up in that era, right. I know. I know if Van Gundy's here, I know his head is go- he's going to be the hardest worker on the yeah. on the thing. But you know, sometimes it's that guy, that blue collar guy who came up through the ranks, going through the G League, going through the. And I think that I didn't know a lot about Mike Miller, but he's he's, you know, it's impressive so far. I think with what he's like to be thrown in the middle of this, mm-hmm. in the middle of the season, and get some kind of results. I mean, we're not winning everything, but we're, we're close to 500 since he's been here in mid-season. Yeah, since he's been here, absolutely. Right. Like I said, you've definitely seen the improvements. Uh, out of the youngsters that we have right now, mm-hmm. the core that's here right now, who are you most impressed with? Who do you like the, the most? Uh, wow. Well, you know, um, it's a tough one. Uh, I, obviously, I'm cheering for RJ. Um, you know, I love his whole attitude. Came here, embraced it, put it on his shoulders. Uh, but I, I, Mitch is really what's impressing me. That's my me. guy. That's your guy. That, that's I know he's your guy. guy. Um, he, I mean, he's just like a breath of fresh air. He's, you know, again, another guy we're lucky enough to meet. He's like a big kid. And I don't th- I don't even think, like, who, I don't know who said it. Was it Mello who said that? Like, he doesn't even Mello. think he knows how good he can be. Yep. Um, if I just want him to learn a couple, like, baby hook. Just, I don't know, because everything he's doing is, is, is you know, Impul- it's like impactful, it's like, yeah. Yeah, it's impactful, mm-hmm. and he's doing it like without running a play for him. Right. Right. I mean, unless you count the lobs that they're doing for him, but mm-hmm. like he doesn't have like a go-to move, and he's still getting, you know, so he could stay out of foul trouble. I mean, he's like the anchor of the defense, leading the league in second chance points right now, Incredible. and in limited minutes. Incredible. I mean, you gotta think about it. He's coming off the bench. He's only averaging maybe around twenty something minutes right. a game. So, as you said, I think Mitch. The, the key to his development is going to be can he create his own shot, right. you know, like a little high percentage shot here and there. Obviously, the lobs are critical. Mm-hmm. I think you, you've seen him set a lot more better screens since Miller's been yeah. in. He's playing a lot more disciplined. Yeah. So I, th- I think the sky is the limit for Mitch, um, man. Yeah, Absolutely. and he wears your shirts. Yeah, that's and it. And your shirts. And he's a supporter of Knicks <laughs> Man TV, man. Right, that's right. My guy. I mean, you got to keep him. Yeah. You got to keep him for no other reason. That, that's my guy, man. Give me your, your all time starting five. Like, who, oh, who's boy. Your, your five? That you would throw out there since I, since I've been watching since them? you've been watching okay this. so I'm not saying Frazier then because I didn't really see Frazier all right saying, so let's, let's start from who, who the, the champion how about the championship team sure let's go from sure. the championship teams uh, I mean I, th- I don't know how you could pay. I think Frazier's again I, I didn't get to see him play but I'm a little bit of a historian mm-hmm. uh, I mean I can't imagine that I think he's probably considered the greatest Nick ever I'm sure there's some Ewing people but you know you got the two rings he's still with the Knicks he's flamboyant he's I, I think Clyde he's, is a, he's a relic he's, man. He's, he's a relic that's it he's, he, on, the, he's on the Nick Mount Rushmore for sure of course um, so he's got to be your point guard um, two guard uh, gosh um, I mean I'm probably going to get blasted for this but I mean I mean, I know you want like you're supposed to say Earl Monroe. I'm thinking whoever you want. I mean, this is this is your team, man. <laughs> this is your team. I mean, I'm just such a John Starks guy. I mean, I know it. I know it's not the the, the, the sexy answer. Yeah, yeah. But um, the guy, he has so much heart. He's like one of us. He's the guy I like to cheer for. Um, so I'm putting him on my team. I'm putting him on my guy. I'm putting him on my guy. Yeah, it's my okay. guy. Uh, small forward. I mean, I don't even, do I even have to say Bernard King? King's uh, King's my guy. I think I'm going Ewing at center. How forward? Um, I guess I gotta go Oak. I'm gonna go Oak. Okay. I'm gonna go Oak. All right, all right. Could be, I mean, if, if Sodomar were healthy, I might look at that a little harder. Interesting. So you go. Um, who am, I, am I missing someone at power forward? Who am I thinking? Who am I not thinking about? <sighs> Power I guess forward. could Melo play, Melo play power forward. How about Willis, the I captain? You got Willis, too. I mean, the oh captain, he was versatile, oh man. He was, he was a 6'9 center oh out God. there. Battling I don't want to play anymore. Chamber. I don't want to play anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to play anymore. It's a lot of decisions, man. A lot of history. I know. So even though the season's been rough, man, me and you went to a good game, oh, man. That, yo, yep. Knicks versus Dallas. <laughs> that was good. The return of Chris fun. Dabbs, Porzingis. I mean, that had to have been the most electric MSG's been in a, in a while. It, it, was, it, it was on. I mean, that, that's what it felt. That's what it used to feel like. I yeah. mean, that's that's why like I try to get my kids involved in the Knicks. They just don't have that. That was the I should have. I mean, as much as I had fun with you, I had to get my kids to that game. Yeah. You were lucky enough, and uh, I'm so happy to have you there. Um, but yeah, the the the, the energy. Um, if nothing else, that was like a personal championship. Yeah, you know, like yeah. I was, it was fun to see. We had the Mars supposed to be there. The Mars supposed to be that we predicted. We predicted. We not. Did we not? We called the game. We called the play. We yeah. have proof. We need a bucket. Who did the Knicks go to right now? <laughs> should be. It should be RJ, but I'm thinking it's got to be Mars right now. I'm going Mars. Go to Mook. Let's go to Mook. Go to Mook. Let's go to Mook. Play. Not shoot. Not shoot. Got it. Yeah! Yeah! 
right. yeah, so that was a lot of fun. Um, glad we got the win, swept, swept the Mavericks. And uh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, man. Well, listen, man, it was definitely a pleasure. Thank you for giving me a tour of the fan cave. This is mo one of the most insane fan caves I've <laughs> ever you. seen. Thank this you. is why we had to have this yes. as the next episode. We'll have to do our, one of your watch games. We'll have oh, to do we will game. definitely do yeah. a part two get, of get this some of your and, crow. and do we'll a watch along, man. For sure. Thanks again for, for having sure. us, man. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. All right, Knicks Nation, let me know what you thought about Chris's fan cave in the comment section below. As usual, smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and share these videos. Check out some more of our content at your upper left-hand corner. Peace. Salute to Knicks Nation for the regular season finale of Knicks Post Game Live on April 15th against the Timberwolves. One lucky Knicks fan will win the new era snapback and the autographed John Starks picture. Thanks again to Chris Shamus for the giveaway.